Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dee Dee for anyone who is tuning in for the first time and I create faith-based content to help you come to know God and grow in your relationship with him. So if this is something you're interested in, you know what they say do. Um, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, that's that's what I heard they say do, but I'm, I'm just a messenger, okay? <laughs> but let's get into today's topic. Today, I want to talk to you about failing God when we disobey him. See, the Bible is clear about the importance of obeying God. He promises us that when we obey him, he'll give us the blessings, but he also warns us of consequences when we disobey him. So what happens when we choose our own path? And I know that admitting when you are wrong is really hard in almost any situation, okay? <laughs> it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow when you have to accept that you are wrong. And sometimes we will even argue pointless points just to not accept the reality that we messed up. But you know what? The hardest pill that I had to ever swallow was disobeying God. And I want to share with you a personal example. So I was leaning into a financial decisions that I really didn't have the money to spend. Um, at that time, I had just left my job, which you can read about it on my website if you ever want to know kind of my little story and how I got here. We had money. My husband was still working. We had savings, but I had not returned to the workforce. So it was just like wise at that time not to be, you know, spending money and flexing right <laughs> unnecessarily. And I can say that that wasn't my thought process at that time. It looked like the outcome was harmless. So I was like, why not? And then the Holy Spirit started to vividly whisper to me to not make this decision. I even heard the same words in a dream. So I had told myself the next day, look, okay, it's a no-go that I wouldn't move forward in the decision. But days later, the opportunity came up again. And so I end up sharing it with my husband and my son. And I was, you know, that I was thinking about doing this thing and they got excited about it. And the more and more I kind of looked into it and researched it, I was like starting to marvel at the good that could come out of it for all of us. Now I have failed to mention my encounter with the Holy Spirit at that time. And really, in fact, it had kind of became <laughs> a fainted memory because I had took my eyes off of God and what he had told me to do. And I set my focus on that opportunity. So guess what I did? Yep. I decided to go against my better judgment and I spent the money. And so in this moment, my action said I knew better than God. That's pretty much what I said. I To put it plainly, I doubted him. I ignored his guidance and all of those signs so that I can do it my way. And let me tell you, the consequences were real. In Romans 6, 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Maybe your disobedience wasn't a financial decision. Maybe your disobedience leads to other forms like death of a relationship or dreams or health or generational wealth and even spiritual death. But thank God that he doesn't leave us there. So I want to share with you three stages for understanding disobedience that I have identified through my personal experience. First, God will convict us. He will stir up some emotions on the inside of us that you didn't feel before to help you really understand that you are disobeying him. And I felt a deep conviction in my heart about my decision, but it didn't come until after it was already done. And unfortunately, we don't always see it as a disobedience when we are truly uh, in belief that we are on this right path or that we're doing something good. Our intentions can definitely be pure, right? The optics of the situations may seem really good. Yes, we may mean well in our decision making, but it doesn't negate the fact that if God tells us no, it means no. Why? Because he already knows what's on the other side of that decision. Everything that we think glitter isn't gold, nor is it God. 
So it was a painful realization I had to come to terms with, but it was also that first step towards redemption for me. If we confess with our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us for our sins and purify us from all the unrighteousness. Confession is also something that helps us understand disobedience. It's humbling, but it's necessary. It's admitting to God that we've messed up and asking for his forgiveness. It's also a step towards restoration. It's denying ourselves and choosing to live in obedience to God going forward. Because see, look, Without confession, you won't receive God's forgiveness or his redeeming grace. So that's what I did. I poured out my heart to God with so much sincerity, admitting all of those mistakes and asking for his forgiveness. And it was a moment of waving that white flag, like just to surrender. It was letting go of my pride to say that I was wrong. And it was saying to God that you were right. You were right from the very beginning. And I should have known better. Of course, it didn't reverse the consequences of my decisions. But what it did for me was that it exposed some cracks in my foundation. It, it revealed to me that my faith wasn't as strong as it needed to be, which only made me want to draw closer to God. And so it opened this door for God to create in me a pure heart, right? And renew a steadfast spirit. And because of my confession, God gave me clarity, which is the last stage of understanding disobedience. See, I began to see my poor decisions for what it was, a lack of trust in God and in his plan. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. So clarity helps us understand the what and the how. The what we did wrong and how we doubted God. So we can look at our mistakes and realize that obedience is just not about following the rules. It's about trusting God's heart, even when we can't see his hand. And so this is why we must always, always, always trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding and all our ways submit to him because see, we can't direct our own paths. He will. He will make that crooked path straight. What's the key takeaway from all of this? It's never too late to turn back to God, even after you go left when he has told you to go right. See, God's love and his mercy are always available to us. And no matter how far you've strayed from him, it, he will still be there. So if you don't remember anything else from anything that I've said today, just know that the hardest pill to swallow is often the one that will lead you to the greatest healing and redemption. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, sincerely, Dee. Dee.